Welcome to mini lecture number three in 7503, Aviation Economics. With this lecture, what we're going to be looking at are service attributes, designing the service price offer and forecasting. Now, what does this really mean for us? Well, the one thing it does mean is that in the previous lecture, we touched on airlines looking at their strategic planning in lecture one and how this feeds into their actual airline planning concepts itself, that is the routes they're going to fly. So this is something that's got to be done before you figure out as to what routes you're going to fly. And that is, what are we going to offer the potential passenger? What's going to be the actual price that we're going to offer it? And also, how can we use forecasting to figure out just what that passenger wants and how our work is going in actually succeeding according to our plans. So in this lecture, what we're gonna be taking a look at is looking at the design of the surface pro, uh, price offer in terms of special characteristics of the service itself. We spoke about that in an earlier lecture when we spoke about Singapore Airlines and Singapore Girl. Service design and how this fits with competitive strategy. Service and that design and the development process, that is, once we've figured out a service, how do we actually translate that into something that happens? The price that we're giving and what does that price represent in terms of value for money? And also bridging the perception gap. That is when we go out and advertise, how do we make sure that what the passenger gets in their mind really matches what we're offering? We're gonna be looking at airline service attributes in terms of the actual service processes, service encounters, and service scapes that we're offering. That is, when people hear about a particular airline, what do they tend to think of in terms of the actual services themselves? Then we're gonna get into forecasting, and forecasting is important for any organisation. That is, how do you predict how the market is gonna behave, and how do you predict how the actual work that we are doing to offer something to passengers how will that be taken up? And once we implement it, how well is it working? So, first of all, deciding on the service concept. There are four things that we'll be studying as to what airlines consider. That is, what the customers perceive benefits are. For example, customers naturally expect safety these days. They want the airline to travel on time, especially our business passengers. And they want a service quality that matches what they paid. And also, if they travel on a particular airline, where once you hear the name of the airline, particular images come to your mind, they want what they see and receive to match it. That is, if you see airline advertising where the cabin staff are always smiling and looking after the passengers, if they get on board and find out that the cabin staff look pretty grumpy, they're gonna say, hey, false advertising, there's something wrong here, and they'll start looking for other faults. They'll be looking at the value created. That is, you, whenever you spend your money, you expect a certain value back. And of course, that's what passengers are expecting. They'll also be taking a look at the consumer surplus. That is, I pay this amount of money, but hey, I'm actually getting something that looks a little bit better than what I've paid. And this is often what we find with service industries. Then of course we come up against that final thing and that is the seller's profits. That is, you might be providing the best service in the world and you've got the most modern aircraft that are only two years old on average, but if you're not making a profit, you're gonna be going out of business. And you've gotta do all this and make a profit. Always remember that. And so the airlines we know manipulate the service price offer to win business. Watch the advertising, when you go online, when you're watching television, what are the airlines saying about themselves? So we learn about, a lot about that. What are the particular things that we'll be studying amongst all the different processes is Holloway's service value loop. And Holloway's service value loop, we'll go into this in a lot more detail, but we'll just go quickly over it. First of all, we look at the type of customer value that's offered. And every time you read advertising about a flight, it's there in what they're offering. We'll look at the service concepts that go with providing that offer. And of course, the big thing that we look at is the core service. For example, when we travel on board a flight, we expect, first of all, a clean aircraft. And we expect the seat to be available. 
with the seat belt that works and cabin attendants that show us where we need to go. We have in our mind a minimum expected service and then of course what we also get is what we call augmented service points of difference. That is, airlines try to say, what can we provide that little bit extra that our competitors not providing for the same price? Such as a free cup of tea or coffee and a biscuit. Whereas our competitor says, no, you've got to buy that. Or a free in-flight movie. Those are the sorts of things that can make a difference for people. Then you've got what we call the functional service attributes. That is, the staff are there to greet you on board, meet your service throughout the flight, but also we have these emotional service attributes. That is, do the staff make you feel as though you're flying with a friendly airline? That is, it makes you feel welcome when you go on board. And of course, all of these have to be done to a certain price. And the one thing that we find after that is that we get this idea of brand image which comes from service blueprinting. That is, the airlines actually try to make sure that they actually say to itself, what is it that we can do? How are we going to go about doing it? And then how do we communicate that? And airlines go to a lot of trouble to make sure that they're putting images in your mind when you watch advertising that give you some idea of expectation so that when you hear the name of that airline, you immediately get a brand image in your mind. And of course, that then provides you personal with functional benefits. That is, you get to your destination safely, on time, and your baggage arrives also at the same time as you. Always an important thing for airlines. But you've got the emotional benefits. You say, gee, I felt really welcome on board that flight. They were really great. And so certain airlines, we know Southwest Airlines, people say, I fly Southwest, they're a little bit more expensive than someone else, but they're still cheap. But it feels like flying with a family. Everyone is happy in their job. And so we'll be studying this loop and see all those individual parts, we'll study them in much greater detail and show you as to how it really makes for a winning airline. We'll be looking at marketing and that positioning, that is, how do we actually position ourselves in people's minds with what we're offering? And so what we find is the airlines say, well, this is what we intended to do, but what do the passengers think of what we actually achieved? And then we have to look at our competitors because in the airline industry, everyone watches everyone else to see what they're doing. So that if someone gets one step ahead today, the competition has moved that step ahead overnight and they position themselves on that tomorrow so that everyone looks equal again. So it's a constant battle in airlines to make sure that they are positioning themselves always in a place that the competitors either fear to go or find it difficult to go. We'll be looking at Anderson's four service uh, elements and we'll be taking a look at the design specifications, that is, how we actually specify exactly what it is that we want so that once we actually produce the service, we have a specification that we can measure against. And airlines always are measuring. We'll be taking a look at the status specifications, that is, are we actually meeting that on a daily basis? For example, are our aircraft always clean? Do the passengers get their baggage on time? And there are different metrics that airlines have to make sure that how are we performing against plan. There are encounter specifications, that is, what were passengers' ideas about when they first stepped on board that aircraft? What feelings were in their mind? Did they walk in and say, no one seems to be interested in me? Or was there someone smiling and greeting them? And did they feel as though it was really great throughout the flight? And People farewelled them when they got off. People like that sort of thing. And it decides as to whether people come back again. And what the outcomes are. That is, do we have passengers returning and are we actually performing to our plan in terms of what we expected to make in terms of profit? We'll be looking at things such as safety and security, the network that we operate, and the schedules. For example, we'll be studying further on in the course that Changing a schedule by departing just half an hour later 
may make passengers go to another airline. We'll be looking at flight completion rate and reliability. And for example, airlines often have to report to governments to show that they are providing a good service and they are reliable. We'll be looking at things such as ticket conditionality. That is, you bought that very cheap $100 ticket, but what they didn't tell you openly was that if you miss your flight, you've lost your ticket. You're going to have to get another ticket. And of course, brand identity, which we've spoken about before. We'll be talking about the service blueprinting process. And this tells us exactly as to how we map out exactly what it is we're going to provide. And we have a flowchart tool to show as to how that's design so we meet exactly the specifications that we've set and of course how we then decide before we roll out what are the final checks to make sure that this new idea that we're offering a new service to our passengers and airlines are trying to uh, constantly doing that Singapore Airlines has just upgraded their Singapore girl concept they've gone to a more mature concept Qantas has changed what it's offering Emirates is also changing what it's offering. Airlines are constantly looking at this service process design as to how they can appeal even more to the passengers. We'll be taking a look at forecasting and we'll be going into what forecasting does for airlines. The fact that it's essential for planning. For example, how do we find out which routes are performing well and which are performing not so well? How are our services gone? What's the impact of the current downturn in, on the economy, on future flying. And we'll be going into different examples of forecasts. And here is just some of the charts that we look at. These charts come from the different uh, aircraft manufacturers who have big marketing arms constantly out there trying to predict how things are going to act in the future. And we'll see things such as uh, just how it varies across countries, how it varies across different markets across countries, and also as to where the travel is going to be for the future. And we can see, for example, that certain markets with forecasting, once upon a time, they may have had very small demand, and we can see this example here of the flights between Japan and China, whereas years later, the market has absolutely exploded. And what airlines want to do is try to predict what's going to happen in the future so that they are positioned to respond to that extra demand. We'll be looking at forecasting methods, trends analysis, causal through econometric modelling, gravity modelling, market research. We'll be looking at the different judgmental size because again there is a, uh, definitely a way there for judgmental forecasting and we'll look at expert sales opinion poll casting, and we'll look at mathematical ways, such as uh, Bayesian methods. So what we'll be doing, we won't be doing the deep mathematics, so don't be put off by that. What we'll be doing is what these different forecasting methods are and how they're used by airlines. And we'll be constantly taking a look at the graphs that are produced by the industry and showing as to how these different forecasting methods are actually used in the real world and what they're telling us. So we get to be able to interpret those and apply these, especially in the assignments of the course. We'll be looking at the time series forecast, long-term trends, cyclical, seasonal, irregular functions. These are ones that we mentioned back earlier in, in Lecture 1, things that affect the airline industry. So in summary, we'll be explaining the design of the service price offer and you'll get to find out exactly how airlines sit down, do their planning, looking at what the passengers are wanting for the future. Whereabouts will passengers be wanting to fly to in the future? What routes are not performing well? How do we design the service price offer? How do people's perceptions matter versus what we've actually provided? We'd be looking in terms of the airline service attributes, in terms of the passenger airline attributes and the service processes themselves, how service encounters affect people's perception of the airline itself, and service scapes. That is, what are we offering compared to others? And we'll be looking at forecasting, a way of making sure that we not only can help predict the future as part of our planning, but we can actually track as to how our plans are working 
and especially in relation to our competitors. And looking at all the different types of forecasting methods and how these are used within the industry and how you can use them as part of your assignments. Thank you.